Shalom, everybody. Uh, this, I'm coming back for a, um, I think this is going to be part four. Um, uh, and um, this is, uh, this this topic here, just literally just doing uh, a video and just sharing the experiences of things that I've, that I've gone through myself, you know, um, literally, you know, instead of just being vague, like, um, oh, I had people lie on me, or I know I've had people do satanic attacks on me, but literally just literally telling you describing the events you know i mean i could this could end up being all the way up to to like 20 parts 30 parts and you know the sad thing is is that i wouldn't be alone i know that many of you who um who are watching this video that if you were to sit down and go back over your life you would probably be doing a 20 part video series as well i mean that's just how how prevalent this is, you know, um, and again, that's the part that for me was uh, just like a, a real shocker because I kind of, um, and I think that's one of the, maybe the, maybe it's an intended consequence or an unintended consequence is that that sense of isolation that, uh, that, you know, that the victim, you know, that, that we're alone in this, that nobody else knows what we're going through. And I was just uh, watching a video with this woman was, um, she is, in another country, and um, the United Kingdom, part of the United Kingdom, and uh, she was just sharing some, uh, you know, things that were happening to her, and I was just amazed. I mean, and you would, and to even say that phrase would be, how could I be amazed? You know, I mean, this, you know, but even still it is, you know, I mean, I don't know how to, how to explain that, but, um, Let's see, I just wanted to um, just continue just and just sharing, you know, some of my own um, experiences, but also, you know, just keeping it real in terms of now looking back and just seeing where, like I said, in some of those experiences when I was on that on that that trip across country, where I know that uh, that uh, some of those examples, the most high was um, was carrying me. I mean, there's a um, a pretty famous um I want to call it like a a poem that I that I that I uh, that a lot of us have have heard. I'm, I'm calling it a poem. It's maybe it's just more like just like an inspirational verse, but it um, it's uh, of a, of a person who's um, they're having a, uh, they're praying to the Most High, and um, and you're looking at um, like a, 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 a like maybe like a, a the sand, you know, uh, a picture of like a landscape where there's like the sand and, and the tide and you see, you know, a set of footprints, you know, and, um, and the wording on the side, it speaks about, um, where the, the most high is speaking to someone and you're saying, you know, I've always been with you. I've always loved you. I've always carried you. And, you know, the person is like, you know, when have you carried me? You know, father, when, when did you know when did you carry me and it was like these these footprints here that's when i was carrying you you know and i i know i probably just butchered that but <laughs> but um I, I i look back at that experience being on that greyhound bus and i know that there were times that that i was being carried by the most high that that literally that um that he truly watched over me and um it says in um in the scriptures, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's in um, I'm going to say in the book of in the book of Hebrews. One of the um, one of the promises that we have as um, as believers in the in the book of Hebrews, it says that uh, that we have all been. Um, this is uh, Hebrews chapter one verse fourteen. And speaking of, of um, okay, they, the, the English word is angel, but the actual word that should be there is um, is messenger. And in Hebrew, that word is malak, for singular, and malakim, for plural. That's the actual word, you know, that's used. Uh, but it says, are not all, are, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Okay. So, you know, um, those of us who are going to gain salvation and gain eternal life, um, the Most High has, in, in some regard, he has preordained that, and he has dispatched ministering spirits, which we, you know, 
like I said, in the New Testament, in the Bible, they're called angels, but um, or Malachim, you know, to be with us. And I really believe that at that point in my life, they were really watching over me. And, and throughout all my life, you know. But um, I look back at those specific times where I know that I was being targeted, um, uh, gang stalked, and, you know, a victim of, you know, satanic, you know, attacks. And literally, you know, because I can't give an explanation for, for that. Or like, you know, just um, sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, will just kind of nudge you. You know, that I would, you know, look over at my bedboard and just kind of like notice this, this thin, drippy, dry thing and turn over the patch and find where someone had dripped some type of a fluid. And in the fluid was um, these, what, uh, larval eggs for bed bugs and that the bed bugs were literally forming because it was a building that, you know, was dealing with the bed bug problem. And I had them. And so I know what a bed bug looks like. And here was a whole, again, like I said, the patch, the back of that patch. Okay, was literally row upon row upon row upon row upon row upon row. And if those things had like been able to to form, you know, and grow and then just come down there and, you know, fill up, you know, and burrow themselves into into that that bed frame and into the mattress and such. You talk about sleep deprivation, <sighs> man. But, um, you know, but it, that's where, you know, again, you know, the most high in those in those in those subtle ways. You know, I think sometimes that um, we we only we will only allow ourselves to believe in the Most High when we something when we see something that's like of a biblical manifestation. You know, like literally a burning bush, you know, or a thundering voice from heaven. Then we'll believe it. But sometimes the subtle, almost like un they're almost like unnoticeable. If you were not, if you were not able to slow it down, you know, an incident that happens that you can look back over, you would really not even know or recognize that that right there was the hand of the Most High, because it's so subtle. It's so subtle. Um, an experience there uh, that I wanted to share. Another experience that I had. I mean, there's 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 a uh, there's tons of them. But um, one of them that I wanted to share was, um, again, in the building that I was in, you know, where this, where all this happened, was, um, oh, see, I just, I just, I was, I started thinking again about those, um, about the patch that was on my headboard, and um, it, uh, it, uh, the, the incident, you know, I can't remember, it just, it just, uh, it just flew out out of my mind. I can't remember what it was, but um, okay. So uh, let me. But that's okay because I got tons of them. Hey, don't think that I'm um I'm only I've only got like one or two memories, or no, huh? No, these are I've got I've got tons of them. But um, one of the things that I wanted to say is that um, we really need to we need heroes, okay. And the greatest heroes are our Savior. Because I think that, okay, I'm going to make an observation. And I don't think that I'm wrong in this. If you disagree, by all means, you know, please, in the comments section, tell me that you disagree and then tell me why. But would I be far off the mark if I were to say that the Messiah... Who the world mistakenly calls Jesus Christ, would I be mistaken if I were to say that he was a targeted individual? You know, I mean, you look at his life, look at the times that he had to literally leave villages, leave certain areas, retreat into the mountains, retreat into Mount Olive, okay? How many times do we read in the scriptures where his perpetrators, his stalkers, literally had meetings where they talked about how they could kill him? How many times do we read in the scriptures where there were people who were reporting back to the scribes and the Pharisees things that he was doing? How many times do we read in the scriptures where there were people coming up to him trying to get him into conversations, trying to trick him, trying to trip him up so they could use his words against him. Now, we know if you, 
seriously, let's if we were to go to the book of John, you know, we can read many times when they did that to him. Okay. Now, isn't that something that we all, one of the things that he said is that the servant is no greater than his master. If he's going through something, if he went through something, then by all means, we are going to have to go through it as well. Okay. And I, and so I, so again, I say, would I really be off the mark? How far off the mark would I be if I were to say that, that our, that our master, okay, our savior, our coming king was a targeted individual? How far off the mark would I be? If you, seriously, if you want to, if you want to argue that, okay, then, then you can do that. And I want to just share something because I've thought about this, this incident that happened many times. Okay, many times. This is in, you know, the life of, um, of our master. Now his name, okay, his name is not Jesus. Okay, I mean, just, I'm just, let me just, it's not, okay? And I just, I just have to say that. So I'm going to call him by his Hebrew name. Because he was a Hebrew. And his name was actually Yahushua. Okay, some people say Yeshua. Some people say Yahshua. Or no. Um, there's a couple of different pronunciations. I guess it depends on how you, how it was taught to you or how you interpret it or whatever. But I say Yahushua. Okay, so we're going to read this right here. This is, this is about, okay, remember how he had brought Lazarus back from the dead. And so basically there was a party. Okay. And the family was happy. They were happy that, you know, their, their, their brother, their son, you know, was, was brought back to them. And, you know, clearly these were people who, who loved Yahushua. Now look at what it says here. I'm just going to read this one part. So there's, so they throw a party. Basically, they have a feast or a party for Lazarus. Okay, this is on John uh, chapter 12. Then Yah, then Yahushua, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Um, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Yahushua, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the with the odor of the of the ointment. Okay, and then you have you know where you know um, Judas you know did his number. You know we could have sold that you know, but um, but this is the point that I want to make right here. It says right here, um, much people of the of the Yehudim or the Jews, therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Yahushua's sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests, listen to this, consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Yahushua. Okay, now... Think about that for just a second. But look at at how many of us as targeted individuals have had to deal with friends and family who are no longer close to us because our stalkers and our perpetrators started singling them out, started making their lives miserable, started lying on us and doing things in that manipulative, creepy way that they have, that our friends and family who aren't clued in start looking at us differently and start giving us the cold shoulder, start rejecting us, or in some instances, start co-signing what we're, what we're dealing with because they kind of, that idea, which are many, it's in many cultures, that bad things only happen to bad people. So if you're being stalked, if you're being targeted, well, it must be because you did something bad. Okay. Now, again, remember what I said in, in a previous video. One of the devices of the enemy 
and his followers is to use strong negative emotions, okay, to target us, to bait us, to shame us, to silence us, okay? And so when we do, and every human has done bad things, okay, with the exception of like, you know, little toddlers and stuff, but, you know, they use that, okay? But I think, and I just use it as an, as an example that um, what happened to the Messiah as him being a targeted individual and one of the people who was a recipient of one of the most powerful miracles to have ever happened is now about to be targeted. Why? Because he was brought back from the dead. Because many people believed on Yahushua because of what they did. So now they're going to now start targeting Lazarus. I mean, this, I mean, remember I told you what that brother said to me, you know, on the, on the trip cross country, these people have always been around these type of sick, twisted cray crays. Okay. Sickets have always been around, but, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to end this one right here and, um, we'll do a part four, but, um, okay. Shalom.